Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm excited to do, it is going to be a Sephora haul follow-up. Oh yes, I am back to tell you what I think of all of these products that I have purchased recently from Sephora. I'm going to link my haul in the description box. I also did a trying new makeup video where I'm using a bunch of these products so you can see them as I am applying them. I will also link that video down below. But as always, with all of my hauls and all of my first impressions, I always want to come back and give my thoughts on everything after I've tried them a bunch more times. So if you want to see my thoughts on these products that I picked up recently from Sephora, why don't we go ahead and get started. I also wanted to mention that I did film this eye look for my Instagram. I wanted to do something really simple with the Marc Jacobs Terrific palette. I posted a video, I had another haul recently posted a video here on YouTube using that palette and it was definitely more of a dramatic look and I had some people ask if you can also do something more simple with it so I wanted to show that you definitely can do both with that palette. So this look will be coming to my Instagram which is a March Beauty Word. If you're not following me there yet, I hope that you will. I do a lot of um, actual demos of my makeup looks over there and as always if you're not subscribed over here, I hope that you will. If you appreciate people who come back to do reviews on products, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let's talk about foundations because I purchased two recently from Sephora and I've been trying these out like crazy so from Dior I got the forever skin glow and from Too Faced I got the born this way matte 24 hour undetectable super long wear foundation okay so there's also like a little bit of a battle between the two like which foundation would I recommend more so the Too Faced is a little bit cheaper at $40 the Dior is 52 so what shade did I pick up first I think I grabbed like light beige was the shade that I picked up first from Too Faced I did use that foundation in my YouTube video where I was trying new makeup because a lot of you seemed more interested to hear my thoughts on this one and the shade was definitely too yellow for me. The moment that I like pumped it out, I was like, this isn't gonna be the best shade match, but let's just see what we can do. I ended up going into Sephora, I tried vanilla, and it is what I have on today. Definitely a better shade match for me. I still thought it pulled a little yellow though, even though it's a neutral undertone. So I was a little bit angry about that, but I think, it, but it'll work it'll work so you have the pump on it this one is more of a mattifying foundation i i like it i think that it's a good foundation there's definitely a lot of foundations that i have that i love and that are you know like my holy grail status i keep reaching for them i don't think the Too faced matte is going to fall into that category one of the biggest reasons is i don't always lean towards more mattifying foundations i like something that's really natural i think this can pull a little bit more to the natural side like it's not overly overly matte like cake face on me but I also do want to be careful there was a time where I tried it and I was really trying to build it up and then we got a little bit it was a little bit too much and I was like okay so note to self like don't use too much product but if I if I use just the right amount I think that it looks pretty nice. I think the wear time is good. I don't notice it breaking up too soon. I don't notice any like funky settling into my lines anywhere on my face. It's just more of the finish that isn't a personal preference for me, but I still think it's a nice foundation. So if you like something that's more mattifying and it's, you know, nice and long wearing, I think that you would like this one. So for the Dior, like I said, this one is $52. So more expensive, but I... I had a few of you recommend this because I was really buying products from this particular haul based off of your recommendations. I had, I posted as an Instagram question in my stories and I was really going through that and picking out the products that, you know, I wanted to try myself and I was interested in, but also that I was getting a lot of feedback from you. And when I saw some requests for this one, I got excited because I do like Dior foundations. I've tried quite a few of them and I like I'm impressed with them so the shade that I got in this one it was 2.5 n thought it was a great shade match once again you have the pump on it and you do have the glass bottle so these are one fluid ounce so wanted to mention that also and the Dior does have SPF 35 where the Too Faced does not have any SPF for this one how it says skin glow to me it definitely gives that more kind of radiant feel to my complexion which is my preference i still think it's really long wearing though that's something with the dior foundations i really do feel like they can last a long time even the dior backstage face and body which is a very light coverage foundation 
it still has a nice wear time to it. Even though I might not have thought that when I first picked it up, I was like, how long is this really gonna wear on me? I was really impressed with it. It's not too dewy, because I also don't like something that's too, too dewy, because then it just, you know, if you're wearing it for a long time, things can get a little bit on the freaky side, okay? So for me being someone who prefers a natural leaning towards that glowy side, this was a really good fit for me. Uh, I don't have to worry about that feeling of like putting too much on and then it looks like I'm like wearing a lot of foundation. You know, a lot of us want to wear foundation, but we don't want it to look like we're wearing foundation. And that's what I feel for this one. For the battle between these to foundations for me personally I like to go for the Dior <laughs> it sounds so bougie get it together Samantha I purchased a lot of cheek products from this haul it was a little bit extreme I recognize that but I also really <laughs> laughed at myself when I did my first impression with some of these and I wanted to use all of them that I purchased and I just try I just tried my best to make it work curls what do we do <laughs> don't go in my mouth I really tried my best to make it work in that video because I was so excited about everything that I bought. I wanted to try everything, but I was like, okay, how, how, how are we going to do this? But one product that I picked up is from Lawless Beauty, and this is one of their new blushes. So this is the Make Me Blush Velvet Blush, and I got the shade Vintage Love. These are $29. So it comes in this nice compact here, and you do have a mirror on it. I love this blush. It is the blush that I'm wearing today. It is beautiful. I keep going into it and I keep going into it. And once again, Lawless impresses me. They are a brand that I have purchased nearly everything for myself from Lawless. There are just a couple products that I've received in PR from a while ago from them. But other than that, I continue to purchase the new releases that come out from Lawless and I continue to be impressed. Not everything from the line I've absolutely fallen in love with, but a lot of the products I have. It's more of a matte blush. I like matte blushes. I like shimmer blushes. It's all good. So this one is more of a matte blush, but it's just, it's just such a beautiful pinky nude. It's like the shade that I love my lip colors to be. It's the shade that I enjoy for my blushes. It's just, it's so beautiful. It's really nice and long wearing too. You know, blushes is one of those that does kind of fade a little bit more quicker when it comes to our makeup. But this one, I feel like it, it lasts well on my skin and I appreciate that and I'm a big I don't know what else to say I'm a big fan of that blush another blush <clears throat> that I purchased because I'm amazing this is from Patrick Ta and this is one of the double take cream and powder blushes in she's so LA okay a lot of people were recommending me to try this and I kept there was several times when I was making a Sephora purchase that I thought about grabbing one of these and I didn't do it and then still so many people were telling me that I needed to try one of these so this is $34 beautiful like beautiful luxe packaging like Patrick Ta has knocked it out of the park with this packaging we do have a cream product so you have the divider here and then you also have a powder product let's all say it together let's all say it together I'm not really that into cream products. Yes, we know Samantha, you say it all the time. But this cream blush is actually real, real nice. I, it look, it barely looks, I mean, it probably barely looks like I've touched anything because I'm super light handed, but it probably barely looks like I've touched the powder because I really have mostly been going into the cream. It's really beautiful. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. When I saw this shade, I was like, I wonder if this could be like a bronzer for me. Like maybe, cause you know me love bronzers so I was like oh maybe like oh I could do a little trickery up in here no no um no it's a blush it's it's it kind of threw me off because it's a little bit of like the Natasha Denona bronze toned blush that I was like looking at it in the pan I was like that's definitely a bronzer I'm gonna use it as a bronzer don't try to talk me out of it and then you put it on it's like e nope um that's actually a blush at least on my skin tone is definitely a blush and it's the same thing with Patrick Ta it pulls a little bit more pinky on my cheeks so it's definitely not going to be a great bronzer shade for me but it's a beautiful blush I have applied it with a sponge I've applied it with like a stippling brush it, it it layers so nicely it blends out so nicely it's a really beautiful shade oh I really like it the powder side again I really haven't used that much of if this was just a single cream product I would still enjoy it all the same which is super weird but I really would um, but you do have the nice option of the powder shade honestly I'd probably be using that more if I didn't purchase so many cheek products in this haul and I was trying to use a little bit of everything uh, but also very impressed with that glad that I have this I use it a lot I reach for it way more than I thought I was going to but I was really impressed and then also I purchased a face palette yeah <clears throat> yeah I did that 
This is from Chouet. This is the Champagne and Macarons Sweet Cheeks Face Palette. This also retailed for $34. I like the packaging here. So you have a bronzer, you have two blushes, and a highlight. Suntan is a bronzer that I do have in one of my Chouet bronzer duos, which I did not realize off of the bat. So maybe I would have refrained from purchasing this if I would have just slowed down and not gotten so excited, but I did, because technically I do have that bronzer, but honestly, I'm just really feeling this face palette. This was a very successful haul, at least makeup wise. This was a very successful haul for the makeup that I got. Um, so the bronzer, I already, the bronzer I already know that I like. I really do. It's the bronzer that I'm wearing today. I'm not gonna lie, the blushes I have not reached into as much. I've gone a little bit more into Delight Me than I have Romance Me, but that was because I had two other blushes in here. But I do like the Jouer blushes. I own uh, a couple of the blush duos, and I'm a big fan of the formula. And then we also have the highlight, which the highlight is what I'm wearing today. This is in Citrine, which I do not own. That's a really nice highlight. I remember I did my first impression video and I had a Zoom call with some friends, some, some YouTube friends that night. And so I was wearing the makeup and I hopped on and people were like, what is your highlight? Like it's blinding us through the Zoom camera. And I was like, it's Jouer Citrine. So it's a really beautiful highlight. So I really do like Jouer face products. I think they make really, or cheek products at least. I think they make really good cheek products and I like all of them in here. So. I know that I have said that I'm trying not to buy as many face palettes, but I also, what I'm really trying not to buy is just blush palettes, just highlight palettes, just bronzer palettes, and I like that I have three different uses in here, uh, so I keep going into this one, and I'm really happy, actually, that I got it, so... I like this one too. Speaking of products that I really don't purchase as much anymore, but you know, sometimes I gotta sneak this in. I did purchase some lashes. These were the House of Lashes in collaboration with Patrick Ta. I purchased two different pairs. The other one that I have is I mean, I'm pretty sure. I mean, dot, dot, dot. And then these one are It's a Look. I have been predominantly wearing I mean, and I always lose this thing, the plastic cover. I always lose that. So I didn't wanna bring the lashes in because Literally, I go like this and I can see one lash, one lash sticking on top of an eyeshadow palette on my floor. Where's the other lash? I don't know. I don't know. I thought that they were safer to stay in my lash drawer, so I just bought, brought this as reference. But I really do like the I Mean lashes so far, and I think I'm going to like these too because just looking at them, they have a very thin band. I know I've heard some feedback from some of you that you don't like the thin band because you feel like it's harder to apply, and I totally understand that but I'm actually the opposite. I find it really hard to work with lashes that have a very thick band. For me, it's harder to work with. It actually irritates my eyes a lot. The reason why I don't wear false lashes, especially as, as much as I used to, is because they can really tend to irritate my eyes. So I just have to be careful with it. And especially if I'm wearing very heavy lashes, my eyes get easily irritated, which is a bummer for me. It's like gotten worse as the years have gone on, and trust me. I'm sad about it too. I like the really thin band. I find them to be really comfortable. I find them easier to work with. I do use a lash tool and I would recommend those if you have trouble. I use from Tarte. I don't know if it's available anymore because I purchased it years ago. It's called the Little Lash Helper, but there's a bunch of lash tools that will help you. And I'm really liking these. I, I don't know what more I can say there. And I mean, it's really pretty. They're natural, but it's like, you, you know that I'm still wearing lashes, but they're natural, but they're not over the top, and I appreciate that, and I think that these are gonna be the same. So I did also purchase a new mascara. This is from Hourglass. This is their Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. I believe this was $29. I really, really like the Caution Mascara. It's been a favorite mascara of mine from Hourglass for a while. I have repurchased, I'm trying to think if I even got it in PR. I think I just bought it myself. I don't think I've ever gotten it. I don't think I've gotten anything from Hourglass NPR. So I've just always purchased it myself and I keep purchasing it cause I'm a big old fan. But this one was the Unlocked. So this one has more of a like thinner wand to it. When I first tried it, it almost reminds me a little bit of the L'Oreal Telescopic, which was like a huge YouTube favorite back in the day. That was actually one of the first mascaras to really irritate my eyes. I was super bummed about it because I thought it was a gorgeous mascara. It made my lashes like long and beautiful and I loved it. Hurt my eyes so bad. Hurt my eyes so bad. And I kept wearing it and I kept wearing it because so I was like, it's fine, it's fine. And then I finally had to admit defeat and be like, okay, 
I cannot wear this mascara anymore. But it kind of reminds me a little bit of that. The wand's not as thin as the L'Oreal Telescopic, but I feel like I get like the same. I'm like, how can I get close to the camera? I feel like I get like a similar effect to it. I have it on today. Obviously, that's why I'm getting this close to the camera. And it's beautiful. Like Hourglass, you did it again. This is a great mascara. I get smudging under my eyes. Sometimes I can notice after after like a full day of wearing this, I'll have like a dot or two on the, but nothing like, nothing like raccoon eyes, nothing super smudgy. It takes a really long time to get to that area, but otherwise like I'm super impressed with this one. If you are someone who does gravitate towards mascaras and you're always looking for a good one and you want length and you want your lashes to just be a little bit more, the hourglass unlocked. Hourglass caution or unlocked. I mean, I think that they're both great. I did also purchase from Charlotte Tilbury. This is her Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. Party all night, stay all day. Just like what Charlotte always says at girls night. This is the mini. There is a full size version also. I decided to just go with the mini because you know me, I love minis. And I, ha I have like almost like conflicting thoughts on this one because I do think it really helps your makeup stay in place. Like your makeup is not going to move with this one but also at the same time when I first apply it I can almost feel it on my face like it's um, it's almost like I can feel I can just like feel the liquid on my face it almost is like a film that goes over my face and even sometimes when I like first go to smile after putting after spraying this on my face it's like like I can feel and I'm like I'm not sure how I feel about that but after I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. It's not like it's like after five hours, I couldn't feel it anymore. Like it's only after a, a few minutes that I really don't notice it anymore. Like I sprayed my face, I mean, probably an hour ago at this point and I don't feel it anymore, but it really holds on to your makeup. There is a little bit of fragrance to it, which I don't always love, you know, especially with setting sprays. Sometimes I'm like dousing my face with it. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, but it really is going to hold on. So especially as we are wearing masks more, and if you have a day where like you're going to be wearing makeup, but then maybe you're going somewhere that you need your mask on, but then you want your makeup to still look good, this would be a good one to really spray because I think your makeup's gonna be locked into place because this really doesn't let your makeup go anywhere. I didn't mind the spray on it either. It's a little bit on the aggressive side, but it's a very fine mist. So I really don't notice it unless I were to spray myself like right here, which I don't recommend doing. But it's also a really fine mist, almost to the point where I'm like, wait, did I spray? Like, did I spray myself? I, it's just a little bit conflicting because I love how well it keeps my makeup on. I don't love the fragrance part to it, and I'm not sure how I feel about that film. But it's like, I guess it's a good thing if it's going to keep your makeup on. It's just pros and cons. Pros and cons. You would have to make your own decision on if that sounds like a good purchase for you. Right, the last makeup item that I purchased, I still have some skincare and some hair care products and facial razors, but uh, I got a little mini. This was like a bonus offer. This is the Ilia Lip Oil, and this is in Only You. It's what I'm wearing right now. I have the ColourPop Beeper Lip Liner on, and then I put this over it. I quite like this. I'm not always a big lip oil girl even like a tinted lip oil girl but this one I felt like had more more pigment to it it was more opaque than I thought it was going to be on my lips and I do like that yet it still kind of gives that glossy shine type of finish but it's really comfortable at the same time I was really impressed. I like the shade a lot, especially because sometimes with the bonus offers, you can't pick your shade. It's like this; these are our little deluxe samples and like this is what we're sending out to you. But I really like this shade. I've worn it quite a few times and I think that it's really pretty and really comfortable. And even if you don't love lip oils, this might be one that you might like in your collection. So I'm happy with this right, one. Moving over to some skincare that I purchased. I have been a big fan of the Inky List. I've purchased all their products myself so far. A lot of people are recommending it to me. So this is what's considered an antioxidant. So kind of like a vitamin C. So I use this in my AM routine and I like it. The worst part for me is definitely the packaging because this gets very hard to press in. Um, and it's like, and it's like when I squirt it out, just sometimes a large amount comes out and I don't need that much, but it's like impossible to be able to, manip to manipulate how much product I wanna come out. So I feel like I've almost been a little bit wasteful with this because it's like, I don't need this much serum, 
but with their packaging, it's just hard. So it, uh, the inky list is available at Sephora, obviously, but it is more affordable. So this one was maybe like $6.99, $5.99, $6.99, somewhere in that ballpark. And so that makes me feel like not quite as bad, but still I don't want to be like wasting any sort of money. But it is a really lightweight serum. And so far I've been enjoying the inky list as I've added more products into my skincare routine. I would definitely keep trying more from right, them. And then lastly, I purchased some products from a pharmacy. I am a big fan of this line. Big fan of this line, let me tell you. So I purchased the Clean Bee Ultra Gentle Facial Cleanser. I really like this one. I really like their, their honey line has just impressed me so much. Their mask, I think is incredible. Uh, and this one, I do like that it is, like I said, it's just a very gentle, uh, face cleanser. I can use it in the AM. I can use it in the PM. I did have some people tell me that they felt like a burning sensation when they use this. So I recommend with skincare to patch test before you use anything, but especially if there's an ingredient or just something that maybe you're not so sure will work good with your skin. I, I think this is what's recommended, but how I would recommend to do it is to patch test kind of close to the inner part of your elbow. You can just put a little bit of the product there, rub it in and see what happens. Do you get irritated? Do you have redness? Do you have um, you know, like any sort of like a rash breaking out there. If nothing happens, you're probably good to use it on your face. If something bad does happen, I would recommend that you don't put it on your face. So I did the patch test. I didn't have any issues with it. And again, I can just use this as a gentle cleanser in the AM or PM. Really makes my face feel clean, but not squeaky clean, not overly clean. Like when I would, you would like, it would sound like a cheese curd or something cheese curd. This also says it is formulated with sensitive skin in mind. It's a mild low lather cleanser. It helps maintain skin's natural moisture barrier. It is also soap free. Really big fan of this one. And then also from a pharmacy, I purchased their Honey Drop Lightweight Moisturizer. So like I said, I really do like the mask. So these come with their own little spatula on it, which I really do like because instead of like putting your fingers and then on your skin and then on your fingers where you can be transferring bacteria, you have your own little scoop. You just have to remember to clean it after you use it. And then I've been really getting on with this one. It feels very refreshing. It also leaves me just a little bit on the glowy side so like mm, like I just feel like I'm looking good when I put this moisturizer on and I really quite like that this one says it's to promote a vibrant glowing complexion yes and delivers powerful antioxidants to help nourish the skin it's a non-greasy formula and I would agree and again farm I'm really impressed with pharmacy. I know they have some sets available now around holiday time. I mentioned them in my last Will I Buy It where I talk over the new makeup releases. I think a set is a great way to be able to try out some of the products and see what you like. These two new ones that I've added, I'm a big fan. We are almost finished. I have some hair care products to go over with you. From Olaplex, I wanted to purchase their new product. This is their number zero intensive bond building hair treatment. Okay, so like first of all, this just makes me feel like I actually know what I'm doing with hair which I do not, so it makes me feel some type of way. So with this one, you for, you would use this uh, in conjunction with the number three, the number three, yes, the number three hair perfecter, and this does come with a mini of the number three. So I've actually already purchased the number three. I own everything from Olaplex at this point because I bought their newest product. I've purchased everything on my own. Uh, so I already have the number three, but I really liked that it came with the mini because you're supposed to use these products together. So you first apply the number zero from uh, to dry hair from root to tip. You leave on for 10 minutes, then you do not rinse that, but then you would apply the number three on top of that. So when you use the number three hair mask, you use that on damp hair already. So because your hair is now damp from the number zero, that's when you go ahead and apply the number three. You can leave it on from 10 minutes 30 minutes, an hour, however long you want to leave it on, and then you would rinse it off and then shampoo and condition from there. I am a really big fan of the Olaplex line. Hair has looked a lot better since I've started incorporating them into my routine. I still, like, I don't think I have the best hair by any means, but my hair used to be just so damaged, incredibly frizzy. I just could never do anything with it at all and once i started using olaplex my hair slowly started to become more healthier i started to feel a little bit more confident about my hair i very rarely deal with frizz anymore which is shocking shocking to me and i'm super like i used to be so embarrassed because i also don't like my ears i feel like my ears stick out so when you have frizzy hair but then you're also self-conscious about your ears it's the worst thing ever the worst thing ever but my hair has had like 
a complete 180 since using the products on a regular basis now I will say I've only used this a handful of times so far because it's a hair product like I mentioned I only wash my hair twice a week so I haven't been able to use it I mean you can see that like I've, I've used it I can't really say that I feel like there's anything from this specifically that I'm like this has really changed my hair I just feel that about the Olaplex line and I just like to use their products so I don't know if this is absolutely 100% necessary at this point yet if you have the number three I still think that that does really good things but I still like it. I'm still going to keep using it. Maybe I'll cho I'll change my mind once I have like half of the bottle used, but that will be well into 2021. Another hair care line that I purchased was from Fable and Maine. This was the first time that I was trying this brand. They are kind of based on having these like Indian hair care secrets and that's what they incorporate into their skincare line. A lot of people recommended this hair oil to me. This is this is like the main reason why I went for Fable and Maine because so many people talked about this one. Again, because I only wash my hair a certain amount of times a week and I had two hair care products that I was working on. I've only used this a couple times also, but I will say this, you see an instant difference with your hair using the hair oil. I really took my time with this one because I also found a girl on TikTok showing how to apply it and you really want to like spend a lot of time massaging it into your scalp. She did this whole like eight finger thing and then right at that spot you really take some more oil and you rub it in right there. Again this is kind of going back to these, these Indian hair care secrets and I can remember the first time using this oil and the next day going to do my hair and I was actually curling it and I was like why like my hair just looks pretty like it looks shinier it looks fuller like it looks bouncier like what is going on here and I was like oh my gosh I used this hair oil the day before so once again I actually used this hair oil last night washed my hair last night here's what my hair is looking like today this is really nice like I'm really excited to keep using it because I think over time and says stronger hair begins with healthy roots like i feel like over time my hair is just going to improve 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 so i was really impressed with this i did also I purchase a set i have not tried the hair mask from them yet but i did throw the shampoo and conditioner in my shower so these are just little minis and i've only used these a couple times but i think that the hair oil because the first time i used the hair oil i forgot to use the shampoo and conditioner and i really noticed a difference i feel like since i add this in when i use the hair oil also Again, my hair just looks really nice. Like this says uh, gentle care for silky soft hair and a nourishing treat for resilient hair. So far so good on the shampoo and conditioner. Again, sometimes with hair care reviews, it just takes me a while to be able to like fully review the product, but those are my thoughts on that line. And then I just have two more products left to go and these are kind of random, but one is a deodorant. Okay, so this is from Kosas Sport. This is their fragrance free. Oh no, it's just fragrance free. This is their chemistry AHA serum deodorant. Okay, so this is very interesting. So you have like the roller ball here and it's like liquidy serum that you would apply. And it's almost supposed to be like skincare for your underarms type of thing. Like it's like helping improve that area as it's also a um, deodorant. I do not like this at all. <laughs> I don't recommend this in the slightest. This made me smell bad. I don't normally struggle with BO like I mean I I wear deodorants sometimes I just wear an antiperspirant but I I don't really have that type of issue when I would apply this I could smell myself and it did not smell good and I was like the heck and I was like well you know maybe it's just you know something about wearing it isn't like shielding it enough I swear to you it like makes that odor come from my body i cannot wear this not even just being at home by myself with my dog i cannot because i can smell myself and i absolutely hate it it is just bizarre to me so i'm super bummed i think this was maybe like 15 dollars or so i don't like this at all i don't know i've seen a lot of people recommend it i cannot at i cannot at all i did also purchase the drunk elephant their um deodorant that they have in their line i purchased that in the haul i've already reviewed it on my channel i've already said that i really like it a lot i repurchased it from that haul i would keep repurchasing that one that to me is miles better and then lastly i just have some facial razors okay so i purchased these from sephora this is their facial razor so you get one um 
one jigamabob here and then you also have three more uh, actual razors so i typically have purchased my facial razors off of amazon like the tinkle razors and they're 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 very very affordable i really like them i think they're totally fine razors i would recommend them i would continue to repurchase them myself like i do think that they're really nice the only downside that i've noticed with them is i feel like i can only use them a couple times before i feel like they need to be replaced and by a couple times sometimes i mean only one time and i feel like they need to be replaced because they start to get the rust on them and sometimes i can scratch myself so when i'm shaving my face you know i like to hold my face taut and i shave down once again really bad if i were to do that shave down and so every once in a while i can get there's a bug crawling on the wall if you keep watching my eyes Sometimes I can get little red scratches. It's not too deep, it's not cutting my face by any means, but sometimes if I'm not paying attention enough, if I'm going too fast, if I'm not holding my face well enough, I will get little scratches. I have not scratched myself with this at all. It's just, it's a little bit better quality than the Amazon razors. If you're someone who does regularly shave your face, you might wanna invest in a little bit of a nicer tool. For me, I typically do once a month, so, I've only tried this out two times so far because I only shave once a month for my face. But so far, I do think that it's really nice. It's definitely heavier, like it has a little bit of weight to it, but it's also just so smooth when I'm actually shaving my face. The razor is just a little bit nicer quality, which can be nice, especially for your face. So I'm very impressed with these. I like that you have all of the replacement blades. I like that you have, like, I just keep putting it back in here. I think this is very handy um, because that way, like, nothing's getting on the razor with the Tinkle razors. Once you open the cardboard packaging, um, they have, like, the little, you know, jigamabobs that you can put over it so you don't just have, like, an open razor laying about. But if you happen to lose that, like I have sometimes, then that's probably why I'm going through my razor so quickly. So I like that you have like the own little case here. So I appreciate these. Okay, after that, I know that's kind of like a random note to end on, but that is everything from one of my more recent Sephora hauls and all of my thoughts on everything. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful for me to come back and review everything that I have been trying recently. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear if you've tried any of these products. Other than that, though, if you enjoyed this one, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you will also consider subscribing before you go, and I will see you in my next video.